Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm a political scientist and spiritual advisor, and I love to teach philosophy and tell you about cool things and deep thinking. Hope you stick around and like, share, subscribe, all that kind of cool stuff. I'm going to jump right into it because a lot of people have a lot of judgments when they hear the word philosophy. You guys possibly have heard my spiel about this before. Point being, it's probably because you didn't have a great philosophy teacher or anyone to deliver the information correctly. So I'm going to try to do that today and we will uncover why I love philosophy and deep thinking so much and I hope it inspire it to you and I hope if you're watching this today that you are having a wonderful day and everything's going great for you. So many blessings to you. So back to the topic at hand. Number one we're going to go with is developing critical thinking skills. What are critical thinking skills, you may ask? Well, if you have to make decisions, like most of us do, you probably made one today, maybe one or more, you know, you have to understand the ramifications of whatever it is that you are choosing and the resources and everything to put together to make things happen in your life. And whether you, that is happening, whether you are aware of it or not. So if we do study this deeper thinking and reasoning and things like that, it can help us with those everyday decision makings in ways that you wouldn't necessarily think. Stick with me through this journey and I will show you what I mean. I promise. Okay. All right. Let's move on. And I would love to give you an example of a philosopher who exemplified this. Socrates, you may have heard of his name, maybe, maybe not, but Socrates came up with what we would refer to as the Socratic method. That is asking why, why, why to everything. I did this today. Why did you do that? Because of this. But what made you that decision? Well, because I did this. And you start unpeeling these layers and it helps you understand yourself more know thyself which is cornerstone in philosophy and this is what they're talking about when they do that or when they refer to that number two oh i just learned don't do this in europe apparently that's really bad and i'm gonna stop into my videos like this anyway side quest okay if you are studying philosophy you're going to start getting a better grasp on some of the fundamental big questions in life and again this will help uncover things within yourself and these are things such as where does our knowledge come from what is my existence what's the purpose of things and yes you can go around and not think about these things this is true but a lot of people turn to philosophy religion politics a lot of time because they do have these big existential questions and where are you supposed to get this information from and philosophy tells us if we use our own reasoning then we can come to conclusions it's all about living a better life um i think uh and of course you yeah, know i got my notes yeah, no, my notes. okay <laughs> philosopher that really exemplified this I think that helped answer some of the bigger questions. His name is Heraclitus and he came up with, you will never step in the same river twice. And I just want to sing Pocahontas. The water's always changing, always flowing. Sorry, you know, millennial kid, that just sticks in my head. But Heraclitus said it first a whole lot longer ago. And what he was talking about, even if we're stepping in a river, the water, is always going to have different information in it. So even though it's, it's the same river, it still changes. It refers back to the seasons of life and different things that we encounter. We know winter's always going to be coming, but every winter we're going to have all these different circumstances, but some things just stay the same. And, you know, as they say, history rhymes. It doesn't repeat. Anyway, let's move on to number three. All right. If we are building a society, I guess, which we constantly always are, we're building a um, framework of how 
Sound like Kamala Harris. <laughs> framework. We're building a framework <laughs> of how we want to live and how we want people to treat us and how we want to operate day to day, things that we want to go on. And the study of philosophy itself really helps guide what our personal and professional ethics and morals are. And we, you know, like it, it does tie into the first two. But when we start to really uncover those things that we hold as values and hold true, we can start to, you know, put those into practice as well. And I have a great example for number three. You know it. And that is someone we've talked about before, which is Marcus Aurelius. Yes, the emperor, the emperor that had all kinds of virtue reason and talked about living in harmony with nature. <laughs> that will be a theme with philosophy. I promise. Okay. Number four. Do you hear me all these words? All these words I'll be talking? Yes. <laughs> this is my example of improved communication. When you have the big thoughts in your head, the deep thinking thoughts that I'm trying to inspire within you, expressing those getting those out, being able to think deeply like that. These are some of the benefits that philosophy gives us. And also, if you want to be able to give an effective argument for your position, why you feel the way you feel morally or ethically, being able to communicate that out wider is another benefit of philosophy. Jürgen, Jürgen Habermas, Jürgen, Jürgen Habermas, we'll just call him Habermas, that guy, yeah, <laughs> he talks about this quite a bit with communication, because that is essentially how we are moving throughout life and moving with other people and expressing ourselves like that, it is these wow communications that we can actually resolve issues come to more mutual understanding and respect and agreement ideally in an ideal world if everyone can just study philosophy just <laughs> number five you guys ready intellectual curiosity have you ever been curious my dear you probably are if you made it this far in the video then you're probably somewhat curious about what the world is and what's going on and why is this chick talking about philosophy it's almost like a, a itch you have to scratch when you start uncovering some of the different, um, the different themes and concepts and all this other kind of information that opens up within your mind when you start studying philosophy or perhaps with um, you're trying to deeply understand a person or a book or a subject or whatever. Philosophy does uh, help us get a lot of insight into that. And our example for that would be Rene Descartes, who's spoken awful lot about curiosity and that whole self-discovery process we have of it. And also curiosity is just fundamental to human nature. Because, you know, look at if you're American, too, <laughs> they were curious enough to be explorers, a lot of them. Oh, gosh, I do not want to get in that topic right now. Moving on. <laughs> I'm going to give a bonus one. Bonus one, number six. You guys ready? The interdisciplinary benefits, a.k.a. if you study philosophy, no guarantee, but when you go to encounter different situations professionally and personally they will start meshing together tying together and creating um this all right screw it i'm gonna say it. this whole other reality because you've applied this complex deep thought to things and you start understanding to listen to yourself to follow your own nature of things to discover who you are and that will open up so many doors and i will give you a good example um yes i'm a new creator and it's been i just looked like nine days since i got on here and uploaded this but 
I'm one of those people who did follow my instincts on what I wanted to study, what I wanted to do. And in doing that, I've able to now move into a career with, I'll just go ahead and spill the beans, the Stars Foundation, <laughs> which is a organization that helps African orphans, or actually orphans all over the world, primarily working in Africa. And they needed someone with this network that was spiritual and new political um, things. <laughs> I'm a political scientist, like I said. Now, will this look the same for everybody? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there is not an easy way to tie together political scientists and they're stuffy and they're in a suit and we have this whole idea of this person doing all this research and clearly, yes, they do all that. But then we have this image, too, of a spiritual advisor who is wearing, you know, whatever you think of hippie core <laughs> outfits, whatever that is, um, you know, off putting to a lot of people smells like patchouli kind of thing. And it's like those two worlds, how are they ever going to mesh? And when you start understanding yourself and exploring those different things, being authentically yourself. Figuring out whoever that is, meshing whatever or whoever, just forgetting about judgment, building the mental fortitude that philosophy gives you, aka making your mind strong to not care if anybody's judging you. Yeah, those are skills that have carried me over to now getting a opportunity of my dreams, <laughs> working with, with this organization, organization and things. So if you're going to study theology, which is the study of religion, if you're going to be in government, if you are like, like history, if you're studying politics, even if you're going into uh, philanthropy, helping people, all of this, an under core understanding of philosophy and the different concepts within it will carry you so far. Thank you. I love you. Have a blessed day. Love you. Mwah.